It's Thursday the 2nd of April from the MEN newsroom. This is Channel M's Lunchtime News and these are today's headlines. Grounded by the recession, the pilgrims who've paid hundreds of pounds to visit the Pope. We haven't had one bad remark from any of them. They've all felt that it was something which has happened that we'd no control over. Also coming up, the new centre for families dealing with autism, as a report says not enough supports available. So we're running a lot of training workshops and opportunities for people to, be able to come in and see us. And bringing back the wartime spirit, why a return to rationing could help us all. People were encouraged to you know, actually have their own allotment and they would have chickens, so they would actually grow a lot of their own food. Good afternoon. First, almost 200 Catholics have been left devastated after their once-in-a-lifetime trips to see the Pope got cancelled. Many have been saving for months, if not years, for the pilgrimage, as Kevin Duffy now explains. An audience with the Pope is something special if you're a Catholic, but dozens of Greater Manchester people who were looking forward to seeing His Holiness in Rome have been left bitterly disappointed after a travel company went out of business. However, for Peter and Christine Smith of Stockport, it's a double agony because they were the organisers of the £200,000 pilgrimage for 190 people from all over the country. It was being held to mark the centennial year of the Catenian Association, a business and professional group for Catholics. Well, the, the responses that we've had from the Catenians has been absolutely tremendous. Um, we haven't had one bad remark from any of them. They've all felt that it was something which has happened that we'd no control over and uh, that they fully understand the position we were in. It's proof, if any were needed, that nobody and no place is immune from the effects of the world economic downturn. They will all be protected financially with at all the uh, tour operators uh, license. The Pilgrim Group had booked through Magnum Holidays of Chatterton, but the firm was placed in administration at the end of February. In a statement, the owner Gary Boland said, I did everything in my power to avoid what has happened. Peter and Christine have organised pilgrim trips for 15 years. This was intended to be the final one. Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. Two more people have been arrested after a stash of stolen police uniforms were found in Salford earlier this week. The man and woman have been picked up in Blakely. Officers found more than 100 PCSO uniforms, as well as batons, body armour, handcuffs and CS spray holders in Lower Broughton on Monday. They're the same as those used by two bogus police officers who raided a Royal British Legion club in Walkton. Four other people who've already been questioned have been released on bail. Gordon Brown's welcomed the world's most powerful leaders to the start of the G20 summit. Talks have now started to try to reach an agreement on how to rescue the world's economy. The American President Barack Obama has warned they must come to a decision to avoid making the same mistakes that led to the Great Depression of the 1930s. Security's tight in London after a second, for a second day after yesterday's violent scuffles with protesters. One man died during the demonstrations that led to the windows of one bank being put through and some people being left bloodied and injured. Police say there's no hope of finding any survivors from yesterday's North Sea helicopter crash. The search is now being treated as a recovery operation. Eight bodies have so far been found. It's thought the rest of the 16 crew on board have lost their lives. They're on their way back to shore from an oil rig back off Aberdeenshire when the accident happened. Controversial plans to close some of Greater Manchester's maternity and children's wards are going to cost more than first thought. Some of the units which were scheduled to close are also now going to remain open for longer than previously planned. The bill for the changes, which involve merging 12 existing units into just eight, will now cost an extra £40 million. Well, joining us now is Leela Williams from the Greater Manchester Children, Young People and Families Network. Leela, good afternoon. Um, first of all, the bill for all this has increased. Why is that? I think the most important thing is that the investment in women's and children's services is well underway. But it's going to cost more because we're building better and bigger facilities than we originally planned. What changes will people actually notice when these facilities come to fruition? 
What they'll notice, we hope most of all, is that we'll have many more staff in these units and that's what women want. More midwives, more doctors looking after them on the labour ward, uh, more neonatal nurses, the nurses that look after the smallest and sickest of our premature babies. There will be people though who may be worried by the extra cost given what it was previously estimated to be. Uh, I'm sure there will be, but it's a major investment in the local economies. Both the Royal Bolton Hospital, Withenshaw Hospital, uh, will have a big investment uh, in their local area. And as many people will have already seen, the new children's hospital in, in Manchester and the new children's wards at North Manchester are already well underway. What would you say to some people who may be worried about losing, in particular, some of the overnight services in some areas which, which won't be there once this is completed? We do understand that people have concerns um, but for most people they won't see a difference even the, uh, the people who live in those areas will still get all their antenatal care their blood tests their scans for when they're pregnant that will all be continue to be done at their local hospital but when they go to give birth if they want to give birth in a hospital it'll be in a brand new unit and it'll be designed in the way that mothers and the women who are working with us say they want and some of those overnight closures as well were scheduled for next year that's actually been, been delayed slightly hasn't it so they will remain open for longer for they now. will remain open a little bit longer because we feel it's important to get it right this is really a complex program we're spending millions of pounds on new staff and new buildings uh, and we need to ensure that women and babies who are our most important people we look after in the health service uh, get what they get what they need okay Leela thank you very much for joining us this lunchtime much appreciated a murderer serving life for killing a pensioner and dumping her body in a wheelie bin has become pregnant while out on day release. Lisa Healy visited a boyfriend and is believed to be eight months pregnant. She served 11 years of a life sentence imposed in 2000 and was allowed out on day release because she was deemed to be of low risk to the public. Healy, who was 15, and Sarah Davey, then 14, were convicted of the murder of 71-year-old Lily Lily, uh, Lily Lily from Failsworth. Each girl blamed the other for the murder of Mrs Lilly. More than 200 paedophiles have been let off with only a caution by police since 2004. Figures show less than half of those who admitted their offences or were convicted ended up in prison. The Conservatives have got hold of these statistics and say they show that sentences aren't strong enough. The Ministry of Justice says it's not always right to make victims give evidence in court. There's been a surprise rise in house prices. They've gone up for the first time in 16 months during March as buyers start to return to the market. The cost of the average home went up by just under 1% during the month. It means the average price is now back above £150,000. There's a warning. Children with autism are facing a postcode lottery when it comes to getting treatment. Researchers say there's a massive variation in the quality of care that they receive. One in ten parents of children who suffer from the condition admit they've had to move house to get access to better services. That, as a new centre providing activities and support for such families, opens in Northenden. Um, I've heard of it in the past, but I haven't got a clue what it really is. Uh, mental instability. Autism is a communication um, disorder which affects the way someone may see the world around them. So they may have difficulty using words to communicate, which means expressing their needs and wants may be difficult. It may be that people find engaging in social situations particularly difficult. We're opening our resource centre in Northern Dun to people to be able to come and visit us, see what we'd actually do here. We've got various different things like sleep programmes happening and workshops like that. There's arts and crafts, sensory room facilities, for people who want to bring their children along to see us. Various different things, really. Well, that comes as Manchester Airport starts using a unique new information guide designed for passengers with autistic children. The free printed handout explains what they can expect as they pass through the site right through to returning home. The idea was dreamed up by a member of staff who has a relative who suffers from the condition. Now, any girl who's crowned a Rose Queen will always remember her big day, but for 12-year-old Logan Woodward from Oldham, it's going to be especially poignant, as Nina Warhurst now explains. I go to church every Sunday, and then, like, all the girls who go, they, they add up all the marks that you get for going, and um, whoever has the most marks gets the Rose Queen, and I got the most marks this year. We do the walk, um... And then we go up onto the stage and have the actual crowning. And we have a couple of speeches 
and then we have um, the tea and the drinks afterwards. Logan is understandably excited about her big day. Being a Rose Queen is an important family tradition. Her gran, her mom and her three older sisters all wore the crown. But her day will be tinged with sadness, as three years ago, Logan's mom Janet, seen here as Rose Queen, died following a brain haemorrhage. Your mum had real flowers. I had real flowers, real bouquets. Well, it's going to be a sad day and a happy day, really. Um, I think she would have been very proud. This is going to be the last of her brood. <laughs> You know, but it, it's, it's all right. It's just going to be a, a very happy day with tinged with a bit of sadness. The family is determined to enjoy the occasion. Rose Queens are voted for by members of the church and take pride of place in their annual WIT parade. It's an ambassador for the church. It's a way of raising funds and uh, upping the profile of the church via, you know, through, I mean, she goes to Blue Cup, so through the school and through the other communities spreading that, you know, we are St Barnabas Church and... That's who we are. Logan's now just a few weeks away from her big day and will be surrounded by the proudest family in Oldham. I think Logan will be a, a lovely queen. I really do. Um, she puts 100% in everything that she does, you know, which is important because you, know, you go and meet a lot of other people. I feel proud that she's able to carry on you know, what we started and um, be hopefully not, one, not the last one in the line. Hopefully our children can go on to to carry on the tradition as well. Right, let's take a look at the lunchtime sports headlines now with Mike Bradley, who's got details from Cricket to Old Trafford. That's right, James, thank you very much. Lancashire County Cricket Club published their annual report this morning, revealing pre-tax profits for 2008, with just over a quarter of a million pounds, but warned 2009 would be the most challenging for many years financially. Also contained within the report is club chairman Michael Cairn's attack on the ECB, in which he calls into question the governance, transparency and accountability within the leadership and administration of the board, with Cairns also critical of the ECB's involvement with Sir Alan Stanford, the disgraced Texan billionaire. Now on to happy news, and as expected, England maintained their unbeaten run last night with a 2-1 win over Ukraine, and that's a win that sees them retain top spot in Group 6. They're now five points clear of second place Croatia, and they were 2-0 winners over Andorra. While in the same group, Belarus eased past Kazakhstan 5-1. In rugby's Super League, Salford City Reds are in for a tough season, having lost six of their opening seven games. But chairman John Wilkinson has moved quickly to reassure the club's supporters things will get better. We knew this season that it was always going to be difficult. You know, your first step back into Super League is always going to be hard. And, you know, we, we, we were aware of that. We, we felt that we'd sign players good enough, certainly, to compete. Um, I was looking at that stage if we could have finished in that top eight, in the eighth position, would have been a monumental task. You know, I say to the fans, you know, you know, trust us, it will get better. We are aware of, and we are listening to what you're saying. Uh, we want to be winning, uh, the lads on the field want to be winning, and, uh, and I, I'm convinced as the season unfolds that uh, you'll see uh, Salford, you know, playing some excellent rugby, and, uh, and I hope that we can just climb up that table very, very quickly. And on the day it was announced, winger Paul White would miss the remainder of the season and most of 2009. That's after a reoccurrence of a knee injury. John Wilkinson added he thought injuries were the main reason behind his team's poor results. Uh, I think I'm as disappointed as uh, everybody connected with the club, and that's not just the, at the board level, the management level or the team level, but also the supporter level. Um, we started off, as you know, very well. I thought in our pre-season, uh, you know, friendly games... Uh, you know, we, we looked OK. And then, you know, we have had injuries, and I don't want to use this as a, a, an excuse, but it's something we have to take into consideration. Now, on this morning's Channel M breakfast show, Byron and I were joined by three young, budding journalists. They'd all earned the opportunity to gain some experience through the Supporter to Reporter scheme. 14-year-old Dan O'Hara has some more details. It's run by, through a project called Aim Higher, which gets um, young people into further edu higher education. Um, and I was introduced through the Aim High representative of my school. Um, we were talking about careers, and I said I wanted to work in radio. And um, she put me in touch with Supporter to Reporter, and it's been absolutely brilliant since then. 
In the Manchester Phoenix, they've announced player coach Tony Hand, MBE. He's agreed a new three-year deal with the club. Sedgley Park, they slumped to their 12th consecutive defeat last night. They went down 50 points to five against Nottingham. Scrum half Chris Wilkinson, Sedgley's try scorer. And your final piece of sports news this afternoon is it hot on the heels of Alan Shearer's appointment as manager of Newcastle United. Dennis Wise has left his position as executive director, while Ian Dowie is poised to be named as Shearer's number two. That's it from me for now, but there'll be more sport for you in our bulletin from 5 o'clock this afternoon. Mike, thanks very much for the update. Stay with us here on Channel M, much more to come, including why it's being suggested we should return to rationing to help us through the recession. And if you're a fan of David Beckham, he now really is good enough to eat. Now's the time for a challenge and we'll make something really special. So we thought of a life-size footballer. It was going to be different footballers, but with Beckham getting his 109th cap recently, we thought that's more appropriate. So Beckham arrived. It's Thursday lunchtime. Welcome back to Channel M News. If you go online right now to channelm.co.uk, you can find plenty more of our reports to watch, including the landmark legal case in Salford that could lead to cigarette machines being completely banned and pictures of people in Wigan making the most of the new free swimming lessons. That's at channelm.co.uk. More than 1,500 speeding fines have gone unpaid in the last year across Greater Manchester. It's because of a loophole that makes it hard to trace the owners of cars registered abroad. Georgia Calvin Smith's on this. Police have admitted that drivers of cars bearing foreign number plates are getting away with speeding tickets because officers can't access computer databases of non-British cars and their owners. And with the equivalent of 30 offences a week being committed, it means almost £100,000 in potential fines have been lost. Now, the Department of Transport has moved to close the loophole, giving the DVLA powers to share information with its foreign counterparts. The figures have come to light following a freedom of information request by the Manchester Evening News. It revealed that 1,574 non-UK cars activated speed cameras in Greater Manchester in 2008. That would have netted nearly £95,000 at the standard fine rate of £60. It's claimed a return to the wartime spirit of rationing is needed to help us ride out the recession. A survey by the Energy Saving Trust has found more than half of us think setting ourselves daily allowances will help us cut down on wastage and save money. Here's Beverly Walkton. This is an original Anderson air raid shelter. Now, this would be built at the bottom of people's gardens, so when they heard Hitler's Luftwaffe roaring above, they'd all come down here and congregate for safety. Now, it's this sort of simplicity that we're all being urged to go back to as the recession hits. We're being asked to tap into those survival skills, perhaps rationing. People would live very unluxurious lives down here I'm in these sure areas. not really whether we can go back to that, Beverly. I think it's going to be quite hard for everybody. Um, I'm sure it was very difficult during the war, but obviously everything was rationed. Food was rationed, clothes were rationed. People were encouraged to, you know, actually have their own allotment and they would have chickens, so they would actually grow a lot of their own food. This country is at war with Germany. And this was considered, it was in fact called the Chestergate Hotel. Because Not much we of a actually hotel. I know. <laughs> but actually to the people at the time, it had electric lighting, which hardly anybody would have had at home. It had um, it obviously had all the beds and everything, and people would bring in their bedding. I'm sure it wasn't really very nice. But it had flush, some of the toilets did actually flush. Now most people would have actually had, if they were lucky, maybe a flushing outside toilet, but in the main there wouldn't have been flush toilets. People were using tin baths and they were using outside toilets that were emptied, I think, once a week at night. The idea of rationing has come out of a survey in which more than 80% of elderly people said they were using useful hints and tips from the war to get through the recession. You don't throw as much food away, you're more careful what you buy. Well, I don't go to the supermarket as often. I try and, you know, I'm be more careful in what I buy. Well, I suppose the government wants everybody to spend, don't they? Do it. I think there's simple things like um, instead of going out to the shops and buying new clothes, adapting old ones um, and obviously mending the ones that you've got, 
clothes swapping parties, that sort of thing, so that you're not having to buy new all the time. So recession means recycling and learning to do without those little luxuries as we had to during the war. Beverly Walkden for Channel M News. Builders at the new Media City development are to spend thousands of pounds searching for unexploded bombs dating back to World War II. The docks in Salford were targeted by German planes during the Blitz, who used the Manchester Ship Canal as a landmark to navigate by. Developers there have already had to perform similar checks for a new university building, and more work will have to be done around the area of the BBC's new complex. The Bishop of Middleton looks to be taking a leaf out of illusionist David Blaine's book. The Right Reverend Mark Davis is being locked inside a large glass box. He'll spend an hour in the window display at an art cafe saying prayers. He's hoping to show passers-by how lonely and isolated life in some urban areas can be. Next, forget road rage. Researchers say computer rage is the latest thing to wind many of us up each day. More than half of people questioned admit shouting or swearing at their monitors. 40% even admitted physically attacking them, hitting the keyboards and smashing up the mice. A university academic from Bolton's done the research and says losing your temper can too much can cause ill health, though admits the odd quick shout at the screen could actually make you feel better. We've been out to an office in Manchester to ask how frustrated they get with the technology I get, and then I tend to uh, turn it off and try it on turn it on again and if that doesn't work then I go to the IT team I might knock the mouse a little bit but I don't sort of throw them out of the window or anything like that well this is a new computer because uh, the old one kept crashing and uh, on the side of the desk was a fork and a stabbed stabbed the computer so and it broke so I've had to have this new one Sometimes I just walk away <laughs> I get a broom, go to the toilet. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'd do. I'm reasonably mild-mannered, so I wouldn't exactly throw a brick at it, but, um, yeah, it'd upset me. We've got an IT guy here who gets it in the ear of his often. Now, former United star David Beckham, who was in action for England last night, is famous for his sweet right foot. But now it seems he's sweet all over, thanks to a chocolate firm from Hazel Grove. They've knocked up a life-size model. We always... And we thought, well, now's the time for a challenge and we'll make something really special. So we thought of a life-size footballer. It was going to be different footballers, but with Beckham getting his 109th cap recently, we thought that's more appropriate. So Beckham arrived. So the stress I've gone through the last, the past month or so, um, waking up in the middle of the night wondering how I was going to connect the hips and the ankles, every step of it, because it's a totally unique piece together um, statue, was... Um, was Unbelievably hard. We got a mould made from certain body parts and then the head was sculptured from a solid piece of chocolate. And um, that was how it began, really. So uh, we've had very exciting moments and seriously low moments. So uh, all, to, all in all, it's been fun. Well, it's looking fairly bright and sunny right now in most of Greater Manchester. With a look at the forecast, here's Michelle Eagleton. Well, it was a little bit cloudy this morning, but this afternoon we're going to see some drier, brighter spells across Greater Manchester. Some nice patches of sunshine, and that will take us well into the evening. But is it going to stay like that? Well, highs of 13 expected today, but I do know that those temperatures are going to be very different over the next couple of days. Taking a look at tomorrow's weather, a bit of a mixture of sunshine and cloud. Temperatures going down on Saturday because a few showers expected, but the best day of the week is going to be Sunday. Some glorious sunshine. This is Channel M, our top stories. A travel firm based in Chatterton's collapse, leaving nearly 200 Catholic pilgrims grounded. Many have been saving up for their once-in-a-lifetime trips to Rome, which were cancelled just four days before they were due to jet off. They've each paid more than £1,000. The G20 summit's underway, with world leaders looking for an agreement on dealing with the global economic crisis. Gordon Brown says there's already a high degree of consensus. We'll have more on all those stories in our early evening news with Andy Crane from 5 o'clock tonight. But for now, from me and the rest of the lunchtime team, have a very good afternoon. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.